I really wasn't intending uh, to go live right now. I just kind of dropped in my heart to, to go live. Um, some thoughts I've been thinking about concerning prayer. Um, this morning, well, actually, there's two different thoughts that I've been thinking about. Um, simple reflections as it relates to prayer. The first one is this. First and foremost is that the scriptures point to a life of quietness and simplicity. Quietness and simplicity. And I've shared this in times past before, but I want to share it. Um, I want to share this a little bit more in depth. There is such a thing as prayerlessness, having a hard time with prayer. Have you ever, have you ever felt like many times you don't want to seek the presence of God? Just be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself and ask yourself this question. Do I always want to pray? And oftentimes there are moments where when you spend time with God, you can't wait. You can't wait to connect and be with the Holy Spirit and be with him in prayer. But then there's also times where you feel like you can't really tap into uh, a life of connecting with the Holy Spirit. And this is very normal. And this is something that often uh, believers don't really talk about because we hear a lot of teachings on getting closer to God, but sometimes we don't talk about uh, the fleshly, um, how do I say this? The slothfulness that hits when we don't want to pray. Um, and so I want to, I want to talk about why is that? Why is that? But first and foremost, one reason is, I'm going to give you some reasons why it might be really hard for you to pray. Um, the first reason, I'm going to give you several of them, okay? So when I say this, don't, don't think that these are the only exhaustive reasons. But I want you to just listen. One reason one reason why we don't want to pray is because there's sin in our lives. Sin uh, causes us to be very fleshly. And when your flesh is stirred and when your flesh is riled up, your flesh gets in the way of that spiritual connectivity. When you start living a life that is very fleshly dominated, your thoughts and your emotions automatically start becoming oriented uh, to worldliness and corruption. And you start developing a mindset that is not conducive or congruent to the will of God. You start thinking thoughts that are contrary to the scripture. You start developing um, impulses and uh, tendencies that are not the fruit of the spirit. And so what happens is, for example, you start living in a sinful lifestyle, um, what ends up happening is this. You start to make your mindset at enmity towards God. 
The Bible says that those that are in the flesh are at enmity towards God. They, their thoughts become opposed to the gentle, sweet guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so what happens is when that occurs, that becomes very problematic. And you start thinking thoughts that are totally contrary. Instead of seeing God as loving, you see him as um, vindictive. Instead of seeing God as present, you start feeling that he's distant. Instead of seeing God as ever present with you, you think he's gone. All of these types of thoughts, you start developing doubt, insecurity, fear, turmoil. All of these thoughts or mindsets is 100% contrary to the word of God. And so if it's contrary to the word of God, you're going to have a hard time praying because that's not the character or the spirit of prayer. That's not the character um, or the or the compatibility of the reality of God in your life. And so you start believing things that are false. And when you wrongly believe something, I'm going to say this, you start wrongly perceiving things. I'll say it, I'll say it again. When you wrongly believe things, you will wrongly um, perceive things, okay? And so perception equals reality. Perception equals reality. So you might perceive something and that will dictate to you a reality, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that reality is true. And so the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So all of a sudden you start walking in a sinful lifestyle and in and, and the flesh, you start receiving within yourself carnal thoughts, thoughts that are contrary to the word of God, thoughts that are contrary to the spirit of the Lord. And you start wrongly believing these things, becoming strongholds. And now your whole perception and your whole reality is now thwarted and perverted because it's not the truth. And because of that, what happens is because you're wrongly thinking and wrongly believing and wrongly perceiving, you can't seem to get the connection that you need from the spirit because God will not back up a lie. He only backs up the truth. You see what I'm saying? And so if you believe that God is distant, that God doesn't love you, that you've made too many mistakes and now you're guilty and God wants to throw you away, those are carnal thoughts of flesh. And God will not back up lies. He only backs up the truth. So one way, so what happens is this, you start living like this, you start having this stronghold like this, what ends up happening now is that fountain of blessing that is prayer and communion with God uh, is now thwarted. You no longer want to pray. You no longer want to um, connect with God because you are you are interpreting your whole life through a wound or a filter that you should have never received. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It's kind of like this. There was a, there was a study with two groups of women. Um, they did, they did a study um, with these two groups of women and they did um, one group they, they told the women, you are to go to um, a job interview. They took 50 women. They took 25 of them and they, they told 25 of them, you are to go to the job interview. You're going to go there confidently and, and you're going to go there um, 
looking for a job. And then they took another 25 women and they're like, you're going to go with a job interview. But they put uh, makeup on them that was like bruises and like uh, warts and stuff. And they found that that the second group that they put makeup on with warts and bruises, um, they didn't realize this, but they were actually putting nothing on their faces. They just made them believe that they had warts and bruises on their faces. And because they believed that, when they went to get job interviews, they were not confident and they expected nothing but failure and defeat. And subsequently, because of this, when they were interviewed by employers, they those women came back saying, um, those, you know, those employers judged me because of my appearance, not realizing that their appearances were just fine. And uh, the, that, that makeup that they were saying that they were putting on was actually a falsity. And so they, they allowed their perception of what they appeared to be as real. And they believed that so much that all of their realities of their interview was misconstrued by their log illogical thinking. What does that mean? That means this right here. That means that you can come to God very much the same way. The devil will throw all this makeup on you, tell you who you are, who you're not, and you start believing these things. And now because of that, when you come to the presence of God, you are perceiving God to be one way when in reality he's not. You see, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. And so when we do things like this, we become a self-fulfilled prophecy that we inflict upon ourselves because of a wrong fleshly mindset. When God has not condemned us, when all we need to do is just repent and ask God to forgive us and help us to put on a good mindset. So that's one area, one reason why we don't uh, want to pray because we've adopted a fleshly mindset through strongholds and through sin. Another reason why we have a hard time uh, desiring to pray is because, like I said, flesh, sin. The second one is very similar to the first one, mindsets. We have um, wrong thoughts of what God is like, and we don't get into the word. And we don't believe what the scripture says about God. And so when we do that, um, what ends up happening is that we don't receive the blessing of that promise. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Um, another reason, so it could be, it could be sin. It could be a wrong mindset. Another, another reason why, um, we, uh, don't want to spend time with God is, uh, selfishness, guilt and condemnation, shame causes us to look at ourselves too selfishly. And when spending time with God, you cannot look at you and him at the same time. You've got to decide to look towards the Lord. You've got to decide to exalt him. Many times we don't spend time with God because we still unintentionally, is a fourth reason, we still unintentionally um, don't realize we're doing this, but we're formalizing God. We stop seeing him as a person, as, um, as a living being that wants to be with us. And it's so easy because we don't spend time with him. It's so, it, because we don't see him rather, 
it's so easy to put God in a formula, to see God as a thing instead of someone we can go to. And every day we ought to remind ourselves that we are, when we're praying, we're spending time with someone who is alive, someone who is real. And if we're not careful, we can deduce God to something or some routine or some pattern in our life, some formula, and we cause our relationship with God to become stagnant. And so one way to alleviate that mindset is to begin to see the Lord as a living person. They that go to God must believe that he is, not that it is, not that uh, it is something. No, we are going to a person. You see, you we are going to the living God. And so we must understand that when we spend time with him, we are spending time with one who is. Another reason why we um, have a hard time with prayer is because we don't make a habit of prayer. Because, again, we see prayer as a chore instead of someone we're with. Does that make sense? So these are some reasons why it's very difficult at times to find yourself praying. So if I discuss these areas, here are some ways to uh, remove those um, mindsets. First and foremost, we've got to come to God scripturally. What does the scripture say? The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2, that through the blood of Christ, we have drawn near. It is through the blood of Jesus. It is through Jesus and Jesus alone. Number two, the scripture says we draw near to God and God draws near to us. That shouldn't be predicated upon what I feel feel or the lack thereof, it should be always founded upon his word says it. His word says that he is here. His word says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. But they that go to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. His word says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We have to actually believe that. If there's sin in our lives, 1 John 1, 9, confess your sin. Confess it to the Lord. He's faithful and just to forgive you of sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if there's a stronghold or a sin, all you need to do is confess it, agree with the Lord that it is sin, ask him to forgive you, and receive forgiveness. The second thing I would tell you is if you want to make prayer a uh, part of this thing in your life where it becomes a lifestyle, remember that you are pursuing a person. The post therefore, the posture of your heart, this is the second thing, should be not give me something or not, I need this or that. Rather, I want to know you. 
when the posture of your heart becomes, I want to know you, you will see that prayer is a journey, not necessarily something that you want, that you're trying to do better, not some formula. Doing something is, a prayer is not just doing something. It is spending time with someone. So number two, the first, number one is if there's sin, get rid of it, repent of it, believe the word of God, receive forgiveness through Christ. Number two, see, the posture of your heart must be to pursue the person, to get to know the Lord. When that becomes your posture, you will no longer see prayer as this chore, but as a journey to get to know. That should be the posture of your heart. And when you think this way, there will be a shift in your heart and your mind because you are going to begin to see the Lord as someone you're getting to know instead of something that you're doing to check off your list. Number three, learn to meditate upon God's word. Learn to meditate upon God's word. Like I said in the beginning, what happens is our carnal thoughts creep in. We start thinking lies, creating strongholds by believing lies. How do we undo that? We get into the word of God. We meditate upon his word. We, we, when we do that, when we start thinking of his word, we start filling our thought life with his word. Now we start to believe it. Now the Lord becomes your stronghold. And when the Lord is your stronghold, you have the mind of Christ. See, when the enemy is a stronghold in your life, you're a slave to sin. But when Christ and his word becomes a, your stronghold, you are truly free. Your perception is, and your reality will align with the truth of God's word and you will perceive God correctly, not through your feelings or your thoughts that are contrary to scripture, but according to the word of God, you'll begin to see the Lord and experience him rightly, thus believing him rightly. Fourthly, if you want to grow in your walk in prayer and learn to enter his presence humbly, learn to enter his presence reverently to the degree that you give him reverence and honor and humility is going to be the degree that you will sense the grace of Christ rising in your life in prayer. The scripture says that God resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble. The scripture says, submit yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. God wants to exalt you in prayer. God wants to pour out more grace in your life in prayer. But the way to receive this exaltation and this portion of grace is by going low, by giving him reverence, by learning to give him honor, by approaching him with humility. The reason why God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble is because God himself is humility. He just doesn't have humility. He is humility itself. Think about Philippians chapter two. It says, let this mind be in you. Though Christ did not consider himself to be uh, robbery equal to God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the guise of a servant. And he humbled himself even to the point of death, at the death of the cross. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. See, God just doesn't have humility. God is humility itself. God became man. God became man so that man 
can become in that, in that fellowship of God. Now, I'm not saying that we're God. What I'm saying is that we share in his divine nature. And so <clears throat> humility is so important. That is the language of the Holy Spirit, humility. Moses was a man that saw extraordinary glory in his life. And the reason why he saw extraordinary glory in his life was because he was an extraordinarily humble man. And to the degree of your humility will be the degree of grace that he pours out into your spirit. And so the scriptures tell us in the Lord's Prayer, he says, pray like this, our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. What does that mean? That right there at the crux of the beginning of that prayer is an aspect of humility, Father. A father is someone you honor, who are in heaven. You are high and lifted. Holy, I give you reverence and praise. You see that? That should be the posture. You will begin to grow in this grace and prayer. The reality is the very reason why you pray is because his grace animates you to pray. The very reason why you can read the word and pray and spend time with God and want to spend time with God is called grace. 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 He will give you grace. So, if we position ourselves in pride, we will find ourselves being resisted. If you want grace, you've got to walk reverently and humbly to the Lord. The other thing I would say, anything that would grieve the Spirit of God, get rid of it. Repent of it quickly. Get rid of it. You don't want anything in your conscience to trip you from receiving his love and peace. And the reality is this, even if you sin and fall short, that, that right there is another opportunity to receive more grace. If you come to him repentfully. So, And the other, the last thing I'll say about this, um, how you can increase in prayer and have prayer more a part of your life is do not put the Lord in a box. Don't say from this time to this time, that's my time with God. And then any other side, any other time outside, that's my secular time. Don't do that. Learn to set the Lord continually throughout your day. When you spend time with God, set the Lord continually. Learn to bask in his presence. Learn to be with him. When you come out of your prayer closet, continue to maintain that fragrance of prayer all throughout your day by setting your thoughts and heart towards him. This is what it truly means to pray without ceasing. See, it's impossible to pray without ceasing um, in the flesh. However, if you posture yourself to be attentive to God's presence throughout your day, you are praying without ceasing. Prayer is the connection between you and God. Prayer is more than just talking with him. It is being with him. Prayer is more having to do with communion, the sharing of thoughts and feelings on a deeply personal, emotional, spiritual, and mental level than anything else. The love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is promised to those who believe. The love of God has been demonstrated in the grace of Christ. 
once receiving the grace of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit should be your journey. Communion, to commune for union, to spend time to become one. The goal of prayer is oneness. The goal of prayer is to become so one with him where your thoughts and feelings are his, where you will pray truly his will because his will is now your will. Your life laid down so that Christ can live through you. That is communion. That is oneness. This is truly the foundation of prayer. Spend time with him. Get to know the Lord. And what will begin to happen is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the effects of the presence of God, begins to accomplish love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, kindness, self-control. You will find yourself loving spiritual things and you will find yourself hating carnal, worldly things. You see, it's not about the outward legalism or the letter. It's about the grace of the Spirit. It's not about outward legalistic observances, but simple faith and simplicity in Christ. So it's the posture of your heart that he is seeking. If the posture of your heart is not humility, then you will have a hard time with God's presence and getting to know him. If the posture of your heart is not, I want to know you, you will see prayer as a chore. You will see prayer as something that you have to do, a checklist, a religious duty that you have to cross through your day. What you will begin to see is when you have a correct posture of prayer, you will begin to love what he loves. You will begin to have the mind of Christ. You will begin to really flow with rivers of living water that flow from your innermost being. You are meant to fellowship with God. You are meant so much to experience the Lord in your life. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God dwells in you. If you have received Christ, you have his seed, his life, his spirit on the inside of you, my brother, my sister. You are called. Some of you are watching right now and you feel like you're not worthy of this beautiful relationship. Well, the truth is, none of us are worthy. Only the blood of Jesus makes us worthy. We can only stand because of God's grace. You see, there's a scripture. I don't know if there's a Bible here. I'm at a friend's house. I'm actually at Jennifer Cruz's um, house with my family. But there's a... Uh, there's a scripture that I was meditating on this morning. It says that in him, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it was the prayer of Paul that whether it be an utterance, can you get me one? Thank you. Come here, Jen. Shameless plug. Come here. So this is Jen. I'm actually at her house. Subscribe to her channel. <laughs> My wife and family, they're out there in the, in, the, in the living room. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go live. I want to share this with you. I want to share this simple thought 
that the Lord gave me in prayer this morning that I believe will be a great blessing to you. It's actually found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. And it's verse 4 through 9. I don't know what version is this. This is the New Living Translation. But listen to this. It says, I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Let's stop there. There are gracious gifts that he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Verse 5 says, through him, through Jesus, through him. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way. Look at this. With all your eloquent words and all your knowledge. There's a scripture here that says, another translation says, God has enriched um, you in every way, in word and in knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when Jesus returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you. Look at this. He has invited you for what? fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He has called you to fellowship with his son. What is your calling? To fellowship with Jesus. Your calling is to fellowship with Jesus. Let me get another Bible translation because I'm not really a fan of the new living. Let me get this version. This one's better. That's just my, my, I like things are a little bit more word for word. Let me read it to you in a different translation. Is that all right? Hey guys, if this is blessing you, please do me a favor and um, like this stream and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't had a chance. Tomorrow, we are going to go live for fresh oil. Um, it's a time where we spend time with the presence of the Holy Spirit together. Now watch this. Here's a better translation. New Living Translation is okay, um, but I like New King James and New American Standard. But it says this. Listen to this. It's so beautiful, so robust. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus. You have grace from God, which is given to you by Christ Jesus. I don't feel like I have grace from God given to me by Christ Jesus. That's your problem. That's your problem. Stop going through your feelings. Enter his, enter the word of God. See what the word of God says and apply it and believe it. Don't go to him like, oh, I don't feel like I got this. I don't feel, 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 feel. Listen, receive this by faith. It says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus. Listen, it says this, that you were enriched in everything by him and all utterance and all knowledge what do we see? What we see here is that there is an enrichment that can come to you when you know the Lord, when you have Christ, when you fellowship with Christ, there's an enrichment that comes. Verse five, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. This word knowledge, epigonosai. Epigonosai means the, 
the awareness, the perception, the intuition, the knowledge of God. All of this comes by Christ. What do we see? Verse 5, there is an enrichment in everything, not some things, in everything, by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift. Why? Because you have the giver. Eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at what verse 9 says. I love this. God is faithful. God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here's the reality. God is faithful. You were called into fellowship of his son. What is your calling? To fellowship with his son. People want to know, what my what, what is your calling? What is my calling? Say this, my calling is to fellowship with his son. Your calling is to fellowship with Jesus. This is your highest ministry. This is your highest calling to fellowship with his son. Write it in the chat. My calling is to fellowship with Jesus. What does fellowship mean? It's the Greek word koinonia. Koinonia means partnership, companionship, community with him. Our calling is to fellowship with Jesus. Everything should flow out of that place. Many people chase ministry, but they don't chase to minister to him. Many people want to talk about Jesus instead of being to talk to Jesus. My calling is to fellowship with him. And as you fellowship with him, everything else stems from that place. You will find yourself when you are fulfilling that calling and enrichment in all things a grace in all things, in all utterance, in all knowledge, in life, fellowship. When you adjust yourself to see that calling for what it is, what you will begin to see is grace poured out. You will find yourself being a better husband, a better man, a better father, a better son, a better wife, a better mother, a better daughter. Everything stems from that place. Your calling is to fellowship with his son. So God wants to pour more and more grace more and more grace to you. More and more. And as we begin to do that, things begin to shine. You will start to live in a different octane. You know what I mean by that when I say different octane? Some vehicles need premium gas. Other vehicles need diesel gas. It's a different octane of fuel for different vehicles. Many Christians operate from the fuel source of the flesh. Many Christians operate from the wrong octane, their emotions, their past failures, their shame, their sense of inferiority. But if you operate from the octane of fellowship, you will glide through the journey of grace, you will find yourself being fueled 
and energized by grace. You see? So many times we want to formulize God. Many times we desire to, you know, do, if I do X plus Y, this will always equal Z. The spiritual realm is spiritual. And it doesn't necessarily make earthly sense that if you spend time with God, you'll be a better husband, wife, daughter, fill in the blank. But that is the spiritual realm. The realm of the spirit is higher than the realm of the natural order of things. God does not want you to live in a fuel source that is not him. God wants you to operate from the fuel of grace and, and companionship with the spirit. You see? And so when we minister and we give attentiveness to God in prayer, when we learn to spend time with the presence of the Holy Spirit, everything in the natural begins to align itself because it's submitted under the Lordship of Christ. Are you tired? Do you feel drained? Do you feel exhausted mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Do you find yourself frustrated? You need to position and adjust yourself to enter into the heart of God by fellowshipping with his son. Fellowship with the spirit. Prayer is more than just words. Prayer is more than just a formula. Prayer is spending time with the lover of your soul. God wants you to operate on high octane. God doesn't want you to be squirming around like a chicken. He wants you to soar like an eagle, gliding through the winds of grace so that you are renewed. Amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to leave this as an encouragement to you. I wanted just to give you a quick little reminder of who you are and whose you are. Tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, that's 8.30 a.m. Eastern, that's 5.30 a.m. Pacific time, 7.30 a.m. Central time. We will be spending time with the presence of the Lord. We're worshiping. I may bring out the shofar again. <laughs> and we will spend time meditating upon the word of God and prayer. Okay? So, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that uh, before you go to bed, that you would think about these things. I pray that it would be a blessing to you. Gamma, thank you for becoming a Fresh Oil uh, member. Uh, Candy, Dawn, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, for, some, for those that don't know, I don't take a salary. I'm a pastor. Um, we've pioneered a church over in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And I don't take a salary for the church that I am that we are pioneering. And I don't take a salary from the Ministry of Father's Glory, which is um, our media ministry, our traveling ministry. We travel all over the place. We just came back from um, Louisiana. We had a powerful time, powerful time in the spirit. And so channel memberships, all that is, is those finances goes to supporting my family. 
And so I just want to say thank you for that. My, we're almost there in becoming fully crowdfunded for that. And my prayer is that I wouldn't take a salary from either ministry so that I can um, just devote our, myself to growing both of those ministries, both the traveling and uh, the church. Um, the other thing I want to say is if you're in the Houston uh, area, please, please, please register for our event. It's 100% free of charge. We do free events. We're actually launching our e-course. It actually cost $20,000 to produce. And um, we are now, um, we are now what we're doing is we're giving it away for free. And so thank you for the super chats. I see some super chats coming in. Thank you so very much for, for those super chats. Thank you, Brie Love 3. And thank you. There was another brother that, Greg, thank you so much for your gift. Um, so yeah, visit our website. You go to fathersglory.org, fathersglory.org forward slash events. Check out our Houston event that we're uh, currently getting ready to go to July 19th and 20th. Register. We already have over 520 registrations. There's 520 people coming to spend time with the Lord. And the way that we do these events is we spend time with God. There's no agenda, just Jesus. And so um, God is doing a wonderful, mighty thing. Amen. Um, if you have a question, I'll take three questions. I'll take three questions. Put a Q in front of your question with the at sign Chris Garcia so that I can see your question. But make sure that the question is related to what we were talking about today or the event in Houston or different ways um, you can partner with the ministry. So if you have a question, just put an at sign Q. Thank you, Deborah, for your gift. Hallelujah. Put a Q in front of your question and be sure that it is related to today's teaching. Amen. Just give it some time here because I know that there are some questions coming in and I'll do my best to answer um, questions that come in. Yeah, some people are saying, okay, um, Monique says, where in Houston is the event? If you go to fathersglory.org forward slash event and you click on the link, all of the details are there. How do we pray commune? Silence, secret place? Yes, yes, yes. Spend time with him. It's as simple as that. It's so easy, it offends the mind. What does it mean to minister to the Lord? What it means to minister to the Lord is to be attentive to the Lord, to serve the Lord in prayer and in worship and giving him his place. How can we get the e-course? The e-course hasn't come out just yet, but I will, I will send an email to everyone uh, who signs up uh, for fathersglory.org. If you go there and you put in your email um, there, we will send an email blast with the link to the e-course once it's released. Do I believe in journaling? Absolutely. Um, um, let's see here. All right. How do we determine if migraine is spiritual or fleshly or of God or of sin? There isn't anything biblical that would determine one or the other. I would say it's physical. Sometimes there can be spiritual things, but um, I would say majority is physical. 
All right, guys. Well, again, we will see y'all uh, tomorrow um, on the stream. If you can, Jennifer Cruz, if you can, um, do me a favor and um, do me a favor and put the link to tomorrow's stream on the chat so I can pin it. Um, let's see here. I see some, some questions here. Glory be to God. Would you say that there are different levels to entering into God's presence? It seems like months ago it was very easier to press in. It recently has gotten harder for me. I would simply say this. It's simply, yeah, I went ahead and pinned uh, Jennifer Cruz's, um, I went ahead and, uh, pinned Jennifer Cruz's um, our stream for tomorrow. So listen, listen, I wouldn't say that there are degrees. I would simply say this. There are levels of surrendering and yielding. God doesn't change. His presence is ever constant. It is us that change. It is often we that get in the way. Someone just asked, how do I become a member? Jennifer Cruz just put in a link to become a channel member. Can you still be saved? And have addiction that you're struggling with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the importance is this. Continue to throw yourself at the altar of God's presence. And God is faithful to sanctify you as you yield to his sanctifying work in your life. Any advice? Knowing what church is right. One for my family and I. Yes. Does it preach the word of God? Is it scriptural? Do they allow the Holy Spirit to move? Those are questions you want to ask. Is, it a, is the leadership healthy? Is there unity? Highlight saved to your video. Hmm. Okay. Let me see. I don't see another... Yeah, I'm in a battle of quitting smoking. Continue to throw that addiction to the Lord. We break that addiction in Jesus' name. Lucy Garcia, if you can put in your question again. I need to see your question. Just repost it. Do you sometimes pray in tongues? Absolutely. I pray in tongues every day. And I pray in tongues quite extensively. And I would encourage you to pray in tongues as well. And if you don't pray in tongues, ask the Holy Spirit to give you your prayer language. What do I do if I want to yield, but I'm having troubles Surrendering. You need to ask yourself why you're having trouble surrendering. Can everyone pray in tongues? Well, the scriptures tell us that we ought to desire spiritual gifts and pursue love. And so if you desire to pray in tongues, he will meet your need. Why am I under so much warfare and many attacks? Submit yourself to God and Satan will flee. That is what the word of God declares. Cesar Herrera says, I received my prayer language. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
All right. I don't see Lucy's question, so I don't know what her question was. If Lucy Garcia is still there, repost your question. Maddie for Christ says... I'm a teen, 17 to be exact, and it's kind of hard to find friends that glorify God. And sometimes it gets lonely. How can I combat that, Chris? Absolutely. Um, that is very common. The way you combat that is to ask the Lord to bring godly friends to you. The Lord will send you godly friendships. If I don't see your question, guys, I apologize. Please don't take it personal. If I don't have the desire to pray, is that the devil? No, it's your flesh. You need to submit your flesh in prayer and in the spirit. How do I get baptized in his spirit? Simply ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Um, question came back to God about a year ago. I took a year off to work and seek the Lord about a month ago. Now I feel so lost and I feel like I cannot hear him. Feel, feel, I feel lost. I feel like I cannot hear him. Don't go through the door of feeling, get into the word of God, begin to apply the word of God, begin to believe and receive what the word of God is saying. How do you battle being lukewarm by repenting? and asking God to forgive you and asking the Holy Spirit to set you on fire, to repent and do the first things. Seek the Lord, seek the presence of God. Why are you so blessed? Because of the Lord. <laughs> That's it, it's only God's favor. Father, I agree with Justin Quartucho in Jesus name for that need. Do you recommend reading the Bible by myself, Muhammad Bubashait? Um, well, Muhammad, um, if you know the Lord Jesus, um, simply um, ask him to show you and to reveal to you the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to bring godly people into your life to help you read the word. And I would also say, Pray before you read and ask God to speak to you. So yes, you should read the word of God by yourself and read the word of God with other believers. Chris, is it wrong to ask God to remove someone from my heart if he doesn't remove the desire to be married? Is it because God's will is to be married? I can't answer that question for you. Um, that is something that the Holy Spirit would need to make expressly clear to you. What you can do is to throw yourself to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in you. Now, let's see. Can you explain at some point? Okay, I don't know what that question means. Scripture for depression, Pastor, please. What book should I read? Listen, I want you to read the book of James. Um, I want you to read the book of James. The book of James says, is there anyone that's oppressed? He should sing praises to God. That's a scripture right there. Learn to sing praises to God. Learn to worship. Praise, worship will help you in this heaviness that you're feeling. God wants to grant you the garment of praise. And I speak from, from example, and I speak from experience because I used to struggle with chronic depression. All right. Let's see here. Is tongues required for salvation? No. Tongues is a secondary um, experience, and it's secondary to salvation, meaning... It is not a salvation issue. 
Kayla, thank you so much for your super chat. All right. All right. All right, guys. How do you know if you're fully delivered? Because you're fully delivered. Now, there's a difference between having a stronghold and having a temptation. A temptation is a temptation. Being delivered, um, that does no long that no longer takes authority over you or influence over you. How do you know that you're delivered? Because that doesn't have control over your life anymore. Now there's a difference with that and temptation. We all are going to be tempted. Kristen, Kirsten, how can you explain how to get into the secret place? Are there practical steps? The stream, <laughs> sit with the Lord, worship him, read the word of God, meditate on the scripture. The, the, the practical step is this. There's one, spend time with him, however you know how. And he will lead you into greater intimacy. What if your mom deals with witchcraft? If you're in Christ and you're submitted to the Lord Jesus, Satan flees from you. You must believe that as a fact. Witchcraft has no power over the believer that is submitted to God. Father, I pray for patience, Sheki. We rebuke these nightmares and this sickness. We ask you, Lord God, to touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Why can't I get planted in a church? I seem to go from one church to another. You need to examine your heart. You need to examine your mind. You need to examine the motives of your heart. If you're jumping from church to church to church to church to church, the issue may not be the church. The issue may be something in your soul that you need to ask the Lord to bring healing into you because there's no such thing as a perfect church. I love you too. Okay. All right, my friends. How do I get rid of strongholds? Repent. Ask God to forgive you of any stronghold that you've entertained. Begin to read the word of God. Meditate on the word of God and pray. And receive by faith. How can I overcome panic attacks? I get them a lot at night. I've had that happen. Sometimes it's spiritual, but other times it's stress. Not everything is a spiritual thing. Sometimes it is stress. Thank you for becoming a fresh oil uh, silver member. Bless you. Not every, sometimes it's stress. So when you get like that, just get into the word of God in prayer. All right, guys, it's not that time for me to get going. Love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow on the stream, okay? God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.